Hey, Sean, it's Roger. I just wanted to let you know we got a network draft for the finale. It'll be here in the office for you in the morning. Thanks. Bye. We got to tell a story with the beginning, middle, and end. And I hope that, in hindsight, people will feel like the journey was worth it. 7.46, March 22nd. These came in about half hour ago or so. When the Lost card flashes up there for the final time, I want them to just kind of sit back and say, wow, you know, I'm satisfied. People ask me, do you feel enormous pressure knowing you're going to direct the final episode of Lost? And I said, I, I kind of feel that pressure every time. And then you put the safety seals on back. It's going to start getting sad knowing the finale script has just been delivered to my door. So everything after this, there is no more beyond it. Buckle up. You're almost home. It was only around season three or season four of The Shield where I realized, boy, as great as this has been, it's not truly great unless it has an ending. I believe that the end of The X-Files was, was really about sort of retiring on your own terms. I never voluntarily ended anything. So in all the years that I've done, 42 shows I've put on the air, you know, I never had a chance to, uh, to finish one off the right way. We felt like we owed the audience a final season of the show that did answer some questions and provided a sort of fair ending. Happy first day. First day of the last season. I said it feels like senior year of high school, except we were happy about that when you were in your senior year. This is bittersweet, but it's going to be great. All right, are we good, everybody? Let's gather in a little bit. Here we are, the uh, first day of our last season. Um, there really aren't any words to say, except to say we're here to enjoy every day that we have together, and all our love and hard work and that makes back. us what we are. And welcome back. Aloha kakayaka kako. Aloha. And so as we start today, our Hawaiian way is to put into your mind already those good thoughts rather than the scary thoughts or unsuredness. But I really think for Lost, this is going to be your best year. We only get one shot at this. There's only one final season of the, of the show. And I think that in previous seasons, if we screwed up or if we did something wrong, you could always fix it later, or at least you could try to. But this time around, once your feet leave the diving board, you're sort of committed to doing the dive you're doing, and the water is rushing up at you. And that kind of makes it, you know, um, uh, difficult. No pressure. We just have to give everybody everything that we've been teasing for the last five seasons. In the beginning, it felt like any other season. It felt like, oh, God, we have a whole season of shows to do, and how are we going to get there? And it seemed like a huge amount of work. Action! tried to do what we've always done throughout the series and just write the show and just hope the audience responds. Hey everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hey. Hello, hello. The big question was what are the character arcs for the final season? This is our last chance to tell a story with these people. What do we want that story to be? So now what? Go back to where we started. To me, a, a mark of a show that that you want to be taken seriously in the, in, in the canon of TV history is going to have an ending that makes you sort of re-examine the beginning. The last show should, unless your show has changed dramatically, uh, you should try to wrap up what you started in the pilot. All great mythological stories kind of end with the sense of, you know, remembering where it all began. And so for us, the fundamental core of the show has have always been the passengers on Oceanic 815, and we needed to establish that in the premiere. Yeah, roll please. Roll in, 40 frame. Getting back into a, a suit that you've not worn for a while, but it's, it's comfy, it fits you, you know. 
I thought it would, uh, I thought it would feel a little bit more peculiar. Uh, I've been away from Charlie for almost two seasons, but and action. very, very easy. T.S. Eliot, I think, said, after all our travels, we arrive at the place where we started um, and experience it as if for the first time. I said to Damon and Carlton that we had to put Evie in a tree, season six, if we're going for season one vibe. And they did it first up. Look at her up there. How many actresses would do that? Great morning, everybody. Thank you. What I liked about this season was it felt like we went back to things, but like sort of with a twist. That Australian chick's back. Claire? Right, Claire. Claire is back. Crazy. Claire is nuts. Yeah, it's great. Get a little bit dirty. <laughs> a few dreadlocks, you know. I think it's going to be like the new, the new look, you know. I'm going I'm to keep it and... Um... We dress up in it at least once a week. Yeah. To totally almost reinvent that character, I thought was a really bold choice. What is that? It's on my head. She's creepy and she's off and she's weird right now. And um, it's been so much fun because I just get to react to all of that. She's coming or I'm not. All right. Get on the boat. It's always fun to sprinkle in callbacks and things that fans will find significant. Or have somebody say a line that they said before and that will mean something to the fans. Don't tell me what I can't do! If it makes sense for the story, if you can use the Elizabeth or some of the other iconic things from seasons past, I think fans really enjoy it. I totally forgot these are in here, man. Jack and Hurley return to the caves. Pieces of the plane. The baby dolls. That was part of it coffin and the corpses this is i think built from scratch again i think this is something that they didn't know we were going to come back and revisit and it's just so for them to kind of like have to recreate it out of nothing it's pretty impressive oh well, we come across stuff that we've seen before we visit the caves we're kind of like maybe maybe the rest of the season we'll just be on this like tour this this memorial tour of like oh yeah and then there's that time when we went over here It was really nice to go back to our old camp and see those torn down tents all over again. We were here all the time, season one and two. So we see all of their um, <laughs> graves out here. We see Boone's, we see Shannon's, we see Libby's. So um, it was nice coming back. Very old school. What? You know, you and me trekking through the jungle on our way to do something that we don't quite understand. Good times. You guys need any help? You got it? Okay, good. Even those moments where it's really hard work and you forget how lucky we are to be doing it, I think people are forgetting that much less this year since it's our last year. So here we are loving the rain. So glamorous. Hollywood, baby. Why are you on this island? On The Shield, we had six years of, of stuff that had come before that we said, okay, now we've got to find a satisfactory way to wrap this up in, in the final 13 episodes. And how are we going to do that? We had laid out enough mythology and posited enough questions about what was really going on that we needed to sort of answer some of them before we could carry on. You have this enormous amount of uh, stuff in your head that you're not supposed to talk about, that you're just like, I just want to sing. I just want to tell everything. I'm the smoke thing. Well, I mean, there's nothing left to hold it back for. This is it. So, I mean, it's kind of fun that way. That, James, is why you're all here. To actually finally explicate the answers to these mysteries in the show, that was a strange sensation for us, but it also felt really good. It felt really liberating to actually share some of these things that we had held close to the vest for so long. You're stuck on the island, aren't you? 
We're the ones who can't move on. This is the season to find out all this stuff, so here we go. That's what I eat, sir! Whoa! friends in town and they're huge fans of the show and I, I, I made sure all the makeup was off when I got home but they don't want they, you know they don't want any hints and I go I'm not gonna give you and not like I would not like I would anyway I should have just read my little bit of it and just enjoyed the rest of that that happened and not known because it's just page after page like oh, oh. oh. One, two, three, oh. coming back Today is going to be the greatest day ever. As you can see, we've already moved a massive piece of the set that was moved by last night's hurricane. Today on the beach, we're, well, we're doing episode 609, the ninth in uh, the last season, and it's called Ab Aterno. And what we're doing right now, which is huge, is showing how Albert became immortal. And I never want to die, right? I want to live forever. That? I can do. There's a lot of stuff that's come out this episode, man. The actual nature of the island, what what it in fact is. You know, some of the viewers have been waiting for it for a long time, some answers, you know? Well, next time, how about you tell me everything up front? I'm not big on secret plans, okay? It's part of our job as storytellers to make sure that those answers are given in an entertaining, intriguing fashion. Because that's what this show does. That's when it's at its best. We don't want to tell you what to think. One of the things you learn is you, you think it's your TV show when you start it. But the moment it comes on the air, it becomes everyone else's TV show, too. Every one of your audience has a different requirement of what they need to be satisfied. You try to go off in the air on a high note, and no matter what you say, no matter what you accomplish, no matter what you do, no matter how funny the show is, nobody's going to like it because you're going off the air. There's kind of no rearview mirror on a TV show. You know, you're just moving forward. I mean, you know, and you're being chased by 100 coyotes, you know, and it's just that's the way television is. working day before Christmas. Before Christmas. 2009. Halfway through, got three or four months to go. How you doing? How's morale? Morale is great. Yeah. We see the end of the tunnel. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sad. It's gonna be very melancholy. I mean, you're, I already have had a lot of, a lot of that emotion. Um, and as we get closer to the end, there's gonna be so many more of these sort of last times that we're doing this or the last time that that particular actor is working on the show and um, so there's going to be a lot of goodbyes and um, you know that'll be that'll be sad you know we talk about it a lot these days I just had a conversation with Matt and um, uh, I think people are, are going to start you know to die very soon really yeah but then again, what do I know? I had a very last scene with Matt and I. It was just us two on the beach at night. We were just sitting there and going, wow, it just went by so fast. It's already Christmas. And once we come back, it's just going to be over like that. I think that's when it really hit me. Six more episodes left in this final season of Lost. Yeah, I don't have time to feel sad right now. I'm, I'm too busy working on this episode. Uh, no, I'm not sad. I'm kind of curious to know what's going to happen. The further into the season we got, the more it hit us. This is the last time we're going to be writing Hurley, the last time we'll be writing Jack, the last time we'll be writing Log. It was kind of heartbreaking, you know? It was sad, I think. Now, why'd you go and do that? One of the great things about a final season is that you no longer have to worry about show preservation. I ultimately found it very, very freeing, because you don't have to worry about um, saving your characters for things later. You can, you can have them burn bridges that, you, that they wouldn't burn before. The most important part of the final season was having a lot of explosions. Key. I think we wanted 
And uh, we did that. We felt like we delivered in spades. We we, we blew up people. We blew up right. objects. Like every once in a while, there'd be like, oh, the dynamite is lit and it's not going to explode. And we go, we have to do two in the next episode. That's so. true. Three, two, one. I just blew up. I think the island decided that it didn't need me anymore. So, yeah, I blew up. There's people blowing up, submarines going down. You know, it's like, well, you know, we're not going to be using this stuff anymore. Might as well destroy it all. We're going to blow up a ship today. We're supposed to be blowing up a ship today, supposedly. Yeah. Where's the ship? Green screened in. Ah, so. Danger, danger, danger. Roll, please. Rolling. We're rolling. I can't wait for this thing to go. <laughs> that black rock is a fan of my existence. Yeah. This is this is a beautiful day. Okay, I'm taking. Ready and action. Ready. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Wow. I hope they got that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Cool. Yeah, what? <laughs> it's just been sitting there taunting us the whole time. Sitting there with dynamite, like there was no way that wasn't going to leave without it getting blown up. And to have Hurley do it for us, you know, that made it all worthwhile. We go back to the Black Rock. We say, this is what it is. Richard Albert came on this ship. And then we blow it the hell up. And that's very satisfying because we was like, we gave you every answer you wanted about this thing, and now it's gone. I'm destroying that plane, and I can use all the help I can get. Who's coming with me? But when they split up our group, <laughs> I go, this, this is not looking pretty for me. <laughs> One of these groups is not going to fare well, I thought to myself. Is it us? We're not even candidates. Uh-oh. As we were trekking off, we were like, here we go to our, you know, possible imminent death. <laughs> you know, by important candidates. I wonder which one of us is going to be first to go. <laughs> Started making bets. <laughs> this season, we wanted to give the audience emotional character moments and bringing Sun and Jin together after, you know, what is it, two and a half seasons or something like that? I mean, that was definitely nice. Start the music! Start the music! Oh, you're right. Oh, my God. We should run and then pass by each other. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of had our very private scene, kind of making out with, not just in front of all the castaways, but like in front of the scientists, the Widmore people that I've never met. Very touching scene. Son and Jin scenes have killed me from day one, you know. I'm always crying like a big girl. All right, let's take it from the top, guys. Keep doing whatever feels right. Everybody, here we go, and... Josh and I joked endlessly about the fact that this show was going to end with a group orgy in the cages. And then I'm reading episode 614, and I'm going, oh, no. Oh, God, no. Cage sex only has room to appear once ever in a person's lifetime, and I think I would have to protest if I was asked to do it again. You guys run out. It's going to be spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are we going? Gosh. Which way? That one? It was nice to get a moment of reunion before the disaster. We wanted to give the audience um, the moment of hope before we crush them entirely. It's either kill or be killed. And I don't want to be killed. For us, our big challenges as we, as we mapped out a final season were... What do we want to do with these characters? When you say definitively, this is how it ends for this character, then you really engender a lot of debate amongst your fans. As we were moving towards an end game, we needed to do something that was really, really tragic and unexpected. And we have to get to the surface. What the hell? We have to get to the surface now! We knew that 
this season was going to be about the candidates and this thing, the man in black, had to kill them all in order to leave the island. We very early said he's going to have to get at least half of them, you know, over the course of the season, or else he's, he's a pretty lousy bad guy. This is what he wants. This is what he's been waiting for. Everything that he has done has been to get us to right here. I mean, you get the excitement as a writer of thinking this is right. But at the same time, you get the sadness of, oh my god, I love this character. You know, I don't want to see them go. Alarm! It's the one good thing he can do. The fact that he's able to, to make that decision means that it has to be something that he was um, moving towards anyway. Listen carefully. I think the six years of following Saeed, people are going to be really in love with him one last time. Because it's going to be you, Jack. Saeed! When we talk about it in the writer's room, we, these characters are our, our buddies, our friends, you know. They're just as much present in the writer's room as the writers are, so it, it becomes really emotional when we start talking about, you know, killing off characters. It's really amazing how emotional and visceral it is. I mean, we write the episode, we go through many drafts of the scripts, we know exactly what's happening, but we all had tears in our eyes just watching it on, on film, and it, it's because these characters were so beloved, and, and that was kind of the reason why we chose the ones that we did. You may not like where these characters wind up, but in the overall scope of the island story, it's a necessary thing so that you understand the stakes. The idea that Locke killed them created such an anger in the other characters, such a feeling of vengeance. This episode, this action, in a way, was the beginning of the end of the series. I mean, we saw this as the catalyzing event that sort of, sort of starts the end suite of the whole show. I'm just kind of sitting there and going like, man, we're like the only ones left. And that, it got kind of real then, for sure. Well, no, but you can't, you don't believe it's ending. And you start measuring it in, oh my God, we got four shows left. Oh my God, we got four days left. Oh my God, we have four hours left. Oh my God, we have four minutes left. Oh my God, we have four seconds left. And then the show's over and you don't believe it. You, you break into tears because it's just so, you had so much fun on it. Every day I realize it more that there are, you know, three episodes left, three hours left to shoot Lost. And there's a kind of an anticipation of what's coming. Uh, a, a tiny bit of a tendency to race toward it, but a, but a greater tendency to hold back and try to you know, enjoy what's, what's, uh, what's left. I have been lamenting the end all season. I've been savoring every single second. I think it's really stop and smell the uh, coconuts, so to speak. I think people are really appreciating what we have had here, what we have made here, who we all are, who we were when we started. Personally, I could dig this job for another three years. It'd be wonderful. It's, it's been great. But it's time to go. Rehearsing? I'm rehearsing. Yeah, I'm supposed to be rehearsing. I think for me, the experience at the end of the show is, is sort of like denial, 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 and then the dam is going to break. We have the benefit of being very distracted. We've got a lot of things going on right now that kind of need to get done. So for us, the real emotional moments are going to be very unpredictable. They could come in the editing room. They could come in the scoring right now. Stage. It could happen right now. It's OK, Carl. It's OK. Jacob's going to pass the torch tonight. Somebody is going to become protector of the island. I want to give you the one thing that I was never given, a choice. This is not even the finale yet. And we're going to drop this bomb on everybody. I'll do it. Jack. It's OK. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm supposed to do. I have a pretty strong feeling what's, what's coming. I mean, just, and I don't know because nobody's told me, but I have a, a sense in my heart uh, what the final steps for him will be. And no, they're kind of really all that's left for him. I feel like where he is right now, that there's a fairly direct line for him towards uh, the series ending. 
just glad it's not me. In the writer's room, you try to come up with a situation that you want to end the show. What do you want to say as, as best you can about these characters? The final episode was probably the easiest episode ever to write because all the work had gone in to what is this leading up to. And those big moments, when you know what they are, tend to just leap out of your fingers at, at, at your computer. I hear the finale starts Monday. I haven't seen the script yet. The reason for being the end of a great epic, all of that, right there. Right on those red pages. Getting to the ending is, is very exciting for us because, you know, we've known it for a long time. So it's like having a Christmas present. You've wrapped it, you put it in the closet at Thanksgiving, and now you have to wait until Christmas, and you hope that when Christmas rolls around, the person you're giving it to still really likes that present. Look at that. Still, still warm from the machine. What's inside here, I wonder? Want to see that? Want to see the last page? See what's on the last page? It's on the last page. Yeah. Oh, it's it's exciting. The pages are are red. They're printed on red paper, so you can't photocopy it. The red pages guard them with your life. You have to uh, sign away your firstborn to be able to read it. There's something about getting red pages. It's holiday red, you know. But then there's this element. There's this element of danger in your script, you know, which is, it's fun. It's here. I got this special mailbox with a lock on it. I had to get it so they would actually leave the scripts at the house. It's really big. Teaser and acts one through 10 only. This does not include act 11, which um, I think is, the end of the show. Okay, here we go. Airport tarmac. The final two hours are really just about these sort of emotional moments, putting these characters in very intense circumstances so that we can see who lives, who dies, who ends up together. That's the thing that we, we've always cared about, and we have to believe that that's what the audience is going to care about, too. The finale is, is just very, very important in terms of how I think people look back at the show. As an audience member and fan, I want to, you know, turn off my TV after that last night going, wow, you know, they really got me, and, um, and all that time was worth it. Three, four, five, six, seven. After four and a half years, I have seven okay. days of work left okay. on Lost. That's a sad thought. Now the ending begins yeah. to feel real. Day 9 and 24. Really? Yeah. Only 24 days, huh? Yet another slippery, muddy day on Lost. It's always been hard work on Lost, but it's extra hard now. The, the days are long and many. But the spirits of the cast are very high. People are holding on to it, really relishing these last few scenes. Miles, is that you? Yeah, what the hell is happening? Oh my God, it's so great over here. Yeah, I think we're ready to try one. <laughs> Let's try good. one. This scene will be fun. We're rolling, gang. <laughs> this is like an earthquake now. We're gonna have to act. Whoa. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Ben shoves Hurley out of the way of a falling tree and is pinned underneath. Ground shaking, they have an hour to get to the plane. Rumble, rumble, rumble! Why is this still happening? Whenever Desmond turned off, we need to turn it back on. Ernie is going to stay with Jack. No, I'm not going to let you die. Really? I'm already dead. You're not supposed to die. The island needs no. you. 
need you. I cried when I read a little bit of the script. I did. What part did you cry? What really choked me up, I mean, what really got them flowing, was Jack and Hurley's encounter together. Is that it? No, you're like me. I do kind of think about this, but it's different when it's real and you're reading it for the first time. When you're in this industry, you, you know that shows are going to work, they're not going to work. You move from this project to another project to another project. But when something like Lost comes along, you know, that's a, that's a once in a lifetime experience. It's exciting to be able to complete something, but you know, it's it's sad that uh, that it's over. Venus! Play takes off. Giacchino plays the momentous momentousness of the moment. You expect that there'll be some relief, and I think what caught us, most of us, off guard in the end was just how incredibly sad we felt about not only leaving each other, where we are basically a makeshift family, but about leaving these characters. When you write a character for five years, six years, they're a part of you, and it's very hard to let them go. Jack! Cut to Jack. He falls into the white water and gets absorbed into it. Okay. And I don't know what happens next. All these actors are going to be here tonight for this big kind of final scene of the finale. Sort of like the show coming literally full circle. I think it's going to give everybody a real sense of kind of completion and closure to this whole journey. So I think it's going to be cool. It's going to be like we are the world in there. It is. It is. <laughs> Television is this immensely collaborative medium, and all these people have to come together in order to make this show is such a massive endeavor. And so to realize that this happy family is going to split up, you know, that on May 23rd we all go our separate ways, it is, it's pretty hard to process, and I think that night will be a very emotional experience. When I think about the experience of all being together and watching the final act of the series Lost, it's, I get so overwhelmed, my, my sinuses start to, I just go, I can't even deal with it right now. It's impossible to say how much this whole experience has meant to me. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, thank all of you and, and everyone here. I mean, I feel like the, the magic of the show is not just, is, is really in, in the kind of connection that everybody here on the show has had. And, and that that's the thing that's special and it's really made lost. You know, something that's just extraordinary. I can't believe we're saying goodbye to it in a lot of ways. Um, lost is, is dying, but I think that I feel the same joy that you guys just played in this scene, and it was beautiful. Everything that you've done is beautiful. And thank you. Cheers was 11 years of, uh, of brotherly love. Everybody loved one another on that show. And coming to work was a great experience. So when you don't have that anymore, it takes a long time for that to, for that to disappear and not be important in your mind. There's, there's nothing I don't miss about this show. Um, the, the best thing is that I got to work on it, and I'm grateful for that. Guys, I think Miss Evangeline Lilly has finished her last shot for us and oh, lost. Oh, 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 it is, it's bittersweet. I'm going to be losing my Hawaiian Ohana. 
my Hawaiian family, and I don't look forward to that. I go to work every day, and those people lift my spirits and make me feel loved and give me something to look forward to. Bye. I think it'll actually settle in that it's over probably around into August, September when we're supposed to be coming back to work, and we're not. Oh, that's a wrap on Mr. Holloway. Yeah! Series wrap! I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating tears. Let's thank Jorge Garcia. I mean, sadness mixed with a sense of accomplishment. That's good. Feel different now that you've uh, after you've read it. I feel like the new Jacob. Uh, honey, friend, thank you, everybody. That's a wrap. Yeah. yeah! It's been a big chapter in my life. I mean, Hawaii's been an incredible experience, and the whole experience of Lost is, has been extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. But, um,. All good things come to an end at some point, and uh, and I'm really looking forward to the next chapter of life and whatever that might be. And and I'm also really excited for the unknown.